Hello, this is Doug from Homes Now, Not Later. <clears throat> I just wanted to share a few updates. Homes Now has added two new board members. I wanted to welcome Sandra Felix and Catherine Orlowski to the board of Homes Now. Sandra has joined the board of Homes Now as social services director. Sandra has spent years as a care coordinator helping to find people housing and services. She is also a program assistant care coordinator for Sunrise Services. Sandra has helped Homes Now on multiple occasions to find much needed services or housing opportunities for the residents. Catherine Orlowski has joined the Board of Homes Now as Human Services Director. Catherine has been an entrepreneur and has also experienced homelessness personally in the past, living in a tent in Seattle with her children. Catherine has helped to mediate and help residents and staff communicate more effectively with each other to create progress and solutions. As for Unity Village, it continues to run safely and smoothly. We have had four new residents move in this week. In the past, we would have been able to let new residents in more quickly, but there was a provision in our permit that stated that we had to have a board member on site for seven days after letting a new resident in. This made scheduling all seven days with board members difficult, but that provision expired November 13th, and now we will be able to bring in new residents at a more fluid rate. Also, for anybody who has not been following it closely, there is now a camp on City Hall. Bellingham is currently experiencing a lack of adequate sheltering. Base camp, the shelter managed by the Lighthouse Mission Ministries, is now reaching full capacity on a nightly basis, or almost every night. City and county have also not activated their emergency shelters, and the Byron Street facility has not yet opened. There is an obvious lack of sheltering, and it has overflowed onto the lawn of City Hall as a result, and it could have been prevented. Bellingham's homeless population has no place to go. <clears throat> this is an emergency, and they need shelter now. The camp has been in operation since Wednesday, November 11th. After setting up the camp that day, the campers were immediately served with a notice from the Bellingham Police Department to vacate the City Hall lawn by 8 a.m. Thursday morning, or they would face legal consequences. Early Thursday morning, advocates, students, activists, and homeless individuals and other members of the community came out in significant numbers to observe the anticipated police action and to protect the rights of the unsheltered individuals. Eight o'clock came and went, and there was no police action, largely due to the number of people who were there to protect the campers. What started as six people camping has grown to over 60. Homeless individuals camped out on the lawn of City Hall to make it known that the, challenge, uh, the challenges they face and the actions that are required to implement immediate solutions. Unlike the camp three years ago, which was organized by Homes Now as an organization and focused exclusively on homelessness, this camp is organized by a decentralized group of advocates, students, activists, protesters, referring to themselves as the collective or the cooperative. The group is not an official organization, but an affiliation of like-minded individuals involved in other advocacies as well, such as defund the police, returning land to the Coast Salish First Nations people, democratic socialism, and the Black Lives Matter movement. The camp has been commonly referred to as Bellingham Occupied Protest, or BOP. Um, it's also called the 210 Camp. Um, the campers, uh, based on multiple conversations I've had with the campers and um, over in, you know, on Facebook chat, on their signal chat, uh, other stuff is what I was able to gather, and it, it continues to evolve and change, but uh, what I got from, from what they want out of the camp or what their objectives are is, number one, uh, policy reform. They want policy reform. This includes the city's municipal codes and administrative policies. One of, one of these proposed code changes, uh, which I brought up a few months ago, would be to change uh, Bellingham Municipal Code 20.15.050, Section C, to extend the maximum permit length for temporary shelters from two years to five years. Uh, this would be a, just changing one number in it, and it would, and based on this new situation of homelessness getting worse over the, because of the economy and COVID, uh, this just makes sense. Uh, you know, for in our case with Unity Village, we'd have to get out by August of this upcoming year, and that's we wouldn't be allowed to stay longer under the current municipal code. Um, Number two, the campers want to form a worker-tenant cooperative that can be self-sustainable. 
Uh, they seem to be in the process of doing that, and they are they seem to be figuring it out, uh, what they how they want to do it. Uh, number three, they want the county to buy modular sh uh, modular structures for sheltering and have them deployed to as many locations as possible, either on city or county land, such as Market Depot Square, the former Safe Haven site, former Winter Haven site, and former Clean Green site, and many other viable sites wherever they happen to be uh they there, there were two companies involved with the with the modular shelters for example uh so there was the pallet shelters that's a company out of everett uh the county executive sat paul sidhu did not buy those uh but he did suggest wanting to buy a similar structure f from a ferndale company so like you know a more local version of the same type of concept uh but, you know, whatever's going to do the fastest, that probably makes the most sense to me. Uh, sorry, I, I get on a tangent here. Uh, number four, uh, they, the, the campers want safe camping sites with no conditions, no barrier, low barrier camps, which, of course, they're willing to manage themselves. Uh, but, um, yeah, then number five, um, ending the sweeps slash cleanups, whatever you want to call them. And number six, uh, they want to reallocate funds from the Bellingham Police Department to community programs. The organizers have stated that they're not leaving camp until all houseless folks in at City Hall have been cleared uh, or have a clear and feasible access to permanent housing solution. While we're waiting for local governments to take action to help these people, the outreach team with Homes Now, as well as other members of the community, have been donating uh, food, supplies, cooking amenities, a generator, propane, heat, masks, hand sanitizer, batteries, tents, sleeping bags, warm clothing, and other much needed items. In order to take the load off when it comes to capacity, Homes Now is willing to set up our own site, similar to Unity Village, how Unity Village operates. We just need the land and the basic hookups to support a village. If the modular structures are an option as well, we can even get started right away and then gradually replace the modular structures with proper tiny homes. It will help and we're ready to move, but more needs to be done and Homes Now can't do it alone because it will only be able to house 20 people at one time with any new site that we do. And there's 60 plus people on the City Hall lawn right now. This all could have been prevented. Homes Now has been pushing for increased shelter capacity for years. As an organization, we have been eager to set up future villages as well. A few weeks ago, we turned in a proposal to the city of Bellingham to set up a second tiny home village at the former Safe Haven location, located at 620 Alabama Street in the Sunnyland neighborhood. The city <clears throat> denied our proposal and responded with an RFQ, Request for Qualifications, where we will be asked to compete with other sheltering agencies and prove that we're qualified for city sites, thus slowing down the process further. We do plan to apply to the RFQ, though, since that's our only option at the moment. I would also like to add that if this RFQ was in place two years ago, Homes Now would have never been able to get started at all, and there would be no Unity Village since one of the requirements is having done sheltering for two years. This effectively edges out any new organization such as the Collective slash Cooperative at the City Hall or any new nonprofit <coughs> wishing to do the same thing. I think the need is dire enough, especially going into winter. What I would advise the mayor to do, honestly, is to scrap the RFQ if he can. Uh, this would allow multiple sheltering agencies, even new ones, to be able to work with the city on various sites, and it would allow them to get moving right away. Uh, not, not six months from now, but right now. There's no reason for the city to put all their eggs in one basket. You can have one agency managing one site and then another agency managing another site and then it adds up. Doing it this way will also increase the diversity of available models, and homeless relief can, in turn, be tailored and customized to a person's individual needs. There is no one-size-fits-all solution. Even if you have shelter, you're still in survival mode. There are also assumptions and stereotypes around homelessness in regards to mental illness and drug addiction. <coughs> Classism and gentrification are also a major factor in preventing uh, affordable housing. Forming programs based on these assumptions has a tendency to produce faulty outcomes for homeless individuals. 
This problem will also be exasperated if current policies regarding homeless camp sweeps slash cleanups, whatever you want to call them, aren't changed to provide additional options to those in need. There needs to be a way to prevent camps from forming in the first place. Put very simply, if most of these campers had housing, they would not be camping. When a camp is cleared, the problem doesn't go away just because the person was still not housed and they had to set up a camp somewhere else, routinely being moved along. Unity Village is the first and only tiny home community for formerly homeless individuals in Bellingham, managed by Homes Now. Unity Village costs around $1,500 a month to operate after the initial construction, which we do ourselves. Many of the residents of Unity Village were previously campers before they became residents, and most of them have been cleared before on multiple occasions when they were homeless and camping. Because Unity Village was able to provide emergency triage and transitional housing, it has not only prevented multiple people from having a camp, thus reducing the cost of cleanups for the city, it has also provided better outcomes for individuals and increased quality of life and has resulted in an over 40% rehousing rate, meaning 40% found permanent housing and rising. Providing even the most basic of housing for people quickly and efficiently would result in seeing fewer camps in town and thus fewer cleanups needed as a result, allowing those funds to go towards something more meaningful. I hope that the city and the county can embrace action, get experimental, and embrace multiple sheltering agencies and community members at the same time for setting up future camps, shelters, and villages, all serving different segments of the population. For the sake of all of us, I hope it happens soon, otherwise the situation will continue to get more dire over time. I would also like to advise the campers to officially register their nonprofit cooperative as soon as possible with the Washington State Secretary of State. Uh, this is standard process for setting up any business or any nonprofit or any organization that can enter into agreements with local governments. That would, that would qualify them as an organization and would be able to enter into agreements with local governments. It would also mean that they, they'd be able to take in donations and become tax exempt. Register your nonprofit. Call it the Homeless Relief Cooperative or some other name that makes sense to you guys. Use the structures and bylaws you like, and then you've got an actual chance that the city or the county would sign the papers, even though even though uh, the path will be more annoying and slow than it should be. I'm just going to make a guess on that. Um, as for Homes Now, uh, we've already turned in our proposal for the Safe Haven site, as well as the Clean Green site. Uh, we've already crossed all the T's, dotted all the I's, and we're ready to get started tomorrow, as soon as we're allowed to. We guarantee good results and swift action. Last but not least, I wanted to thank all the volunteers, villagers, donors, and everybody who's supported Homes Now over the years. We wouldn't be where we are without you, and we're ready to do more and waiting for the green light. Uh, let's get this done now, not later. Take it easy.